David, David. Hi, I'm, I'm Peter Walker from Stockholm, hey, Peter, from Germany. Yes. Yes. yes, you wrote to me. That's right, yes. So, welcome to Germany. Thank you. I hope you're enjoying it over here. Well, so far I haven't been either out of the bar or the restaurant, but I'm working on it. <laughs> okay. So, so, I hope to see you. We'd like to do a, a video yes. interview with you at some point. Okay. During, during the time here. All right, well, I'm supposed to be sitting at a table in the lobby. Maybe we can do it sometime when I'm there, okay? Yeah, sure. Okay. okay. You had a good flight over everything? Oh yeah, everything's been wonderful. I'm having a great time so far. Yeah. Awesome. Good. Yeah. It's a fantastic uh, convention schedule. It's really, it's really fun. Have you been here before? Or? Um, well, I've been on a train that was taking me from Switzerland to Copenhagen, but we didn't get off the train. So it's right. the first time I've actually... No, no, you'll find Germany's a great country and the fans are, are fantastic. It's a beautiful country. Yeah, absolutely. I will share this with you. Now, you know, I live in Los Angeles, which right. is like a long way away from every place else. Okay. And and it's the movie industry is located there. So most of my experience of Germany gets filtered through World War II movies. So when I hear the German language, I go, wait a minute, what, what? Yeah. <laughs> because of all the it's movies. A, it's actually very, it's very unfair because uh, it is, yes, the Germany is so totally yeah, different. So oh, I know, I know. So, that's that's the point I'm making, is that is, is that the movies have been presenting a false picture for me. And, yeah. you know, and I get here and it's such a beautiful, beautiful, and so many friendly people. That's right. I, I, me I remember, you know, I watch the History Channel sometimes. Yeah. It's full of films about the World War we II. We call it the Hitler Channel. Yeah, it's probably... <laughs> <a> <laughs> My bad. Yeah. And, then, and then you have this event in Germany near the reunification. Yeah. 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 3rd of October. Uh, so they did not have anything about... No. That's stupid because it seems to me one of the most important events, this is me. That's right, yeah. It was when the wall, the wall coming, coming down. And and uh, to me, I relate it to that that Pink Floyd album, The Wall. Yeah. Yeah, Every right, time yeah. I hear it, it's like that's I get yeah, this they emotional resonance. The wall, yeah, they played The Wall. That's right. Yeah. And I and I get this emotional resonance. It's like that is really the completion of of, of all of the crap that went before. Is like here's a new beginning. And why aren't we getting more of that yeah. information? It's this media in the states is not giving us a full picture. So really, you know, so to actually be here and, and look around and get a chance to talk to people for me is oh, such a great learning experience. That's right. And for a writer, everything is source material. So I hope so. I expect to have more German characters in my next story or book. Yeah, that's right. I mean, there was there wasn't a German character on the bridge in the Enterprise. There wasn't an Arab character either. Yeah, there was, <laughs> I guess. No, in, Indian character. We, uh, we didn't have a Jewish character in the yeah. Indian place. We didn't have so much we didn't have. Yeah. So, I mean, but, you know, uh, well, Gene you, wanted well, to you, have everybody represented. We just couldn't fit them all in. Yeah, the only time you, you, you touched on Germany was Nazis in, on yeah, and that planet. was I hated that episode. I just hated it. Yeah. It was it it, it was because they had the costumes. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> they had, you know, we had to say, oh well, we got co Nazi costumes in this. No, please don't do that episode. They did it. I actually yeah. think the story was not that bad. Enterprise ruined it. Yeah. Nazi yeah. aliens. Horrible. Yeah. It's, yeah. No, it's 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 too easy a story to tell, to, and it's too shallow a story to yeah. tell. Yeah. So I apologize for that one. I didn't have anything to do with it, but I apologize for it. <laughs> right. so, it's a pleasure to meet you now in part because my first question I asked you was just related to the phase two episode. Yes. Because I was about it more when yeah. I, I was asked intended to uh, the filming of the show and I did fly to Richmond uh -huh. and nobody picked me up. I only had the set telephone and nobody answered it. Oh, I'm so, so sorry. I, I, and after that I got to contact you to just make the for the space magazine. And okay. that, that time it was really a shame. Well, I'll make it up to you, whatever you need. Yeah, I, I would like to go finally to the set to start. We with are, we are in, in Fort Ticonderoga. Uh, we have a shoot in June, which I'm supposed to be there, but I haven't had any plane tickets since I got, I'd really like to spend some time in June at home. It's like, I went in the last Portland, came home, Winnipeg, came home, Germany, go home, Chicago, go home, and if I'm going to the shoot, then I'll be in New York, and then Houston, and then it's like, and then there's Las Vegas, and I would like to go home, though. It's, yeah. like, it's like the dog misses me. I go home, the dog, stranger, uh-oh. <laughs> and uh, connecting to 
talking about before was not on Star Trek. I'm a French journalist and I work with science fiction magazine. Uh -huh. But in the last 10 years, I've got many contacts yeah, with the European uh, Space Agency. Oh, uh, wonderful. And uh, I've worked oh, here in a control center. Oh, wow. And last year, even I don't work there, I was allowed to be a founding member of the ESOC Sci Fi. Oh, and if you look wonderful. close, you look. The stars I borrowed from the uh, uh, yeah, of yeah. the United Federation of Planets. <laughs> oh, and and I'm, I'm feeling like it's a sort, not a no, preacher, but now people are approaching me. Robert, a big Star Trek, Star Wars fan, but uh, I'm I'm a little bit ashamed to tell it because the Germans are so serious. And of course, he had the discipline. I don't mind the seriousness. i and I don't mind the, the commitment, the rigor, the I, although I have to share a story. In my room earlier today, I was just getting ready and I was typing something up on the computer and there's a knock on the door and it was the two people to clean the room. And I said, could you come back in 15 minutes? And they gave me kind of a dirty look and said, okay, I'm not going to get in the way of term inefficiency. They gave me an even dirtier look. But, <laughs> but, it, but it, it's like, I love that kind of rig. I love it. It's, it's, uh, some of the companies I've worked for, we've tried to train people to to approach their jobs with that kind of. I hate to use the word fanaticism, but that's the word. It's like, you know, and and because to me that's the way. If you have a job, you should be rigorous about getting the result. So. Um, that's just me. But, uh, but I think uh, the disadvantage we have here in Germany is that science fiction was never such a part of popular culture. We have a lot of science fiction, but... Uh, well, but it, 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 you have Fritz Lang, who did that Frau in London, course. Metropolis, and, yeah. and, and if and he Harry had... Harry Rowland is... And it, but if Fritz had been able to stay in Germany, how much more science fiction would he yes, have been able yes, to do? Yes, like, I mean, you know, I hate to say it, but you lost some of your best scientists. We got them. I, yeah. <laughs> I know that. Yeah, I know that. So, um, but uh, I mean, I've always admired, you know, German technology and engineering, and, and, and of course, when my son starts talking about Porsches and Volkswagen, <laughs> my son's into Hondas, but you know, he does okay. admire good engineering. Right. So I guess I'll see you uh, before the opening ceremony backstage. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good. I hope you get good stuff for your interview. Oh yeah, absolutely. Good. I say, if you want to, if you want to join us, we we normally sit on the balcony to the right of the tech of where okay. they have the technology. We have, we normally have some seats reserved there. Right. So if you want to join us, you'd be very welcome. Oh, I'd love to because there's a couple of panels I want to watch. Oh yeah. James right. and Patrick were sitting there last time. That's right. Yes. Yeah, so yeah. All right. So you're up on the balcony. Uh, on, on the balcony, you know where you have where you have the cam, the the projectors and stuff, and then to that side uh, that, of it. Yeah, that that's, side. Yeah. The big, big, big that's big normally where we reserve our seats. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I'll try and catch you there. <laughs> yeah, you're very welcome to join. Yeah. I suppose I can find my way to yeah. the elevator. It was interesting when I when I told my wife that you're coming over. You know, she said, "Well, who's that? I've never heard of him." And I, no, no, but she loves what well, she she loves Sherlock, uh -huh. and through that she has Doctor Who. So I just said, "That's the Stephen Moffat of Star Trek." Oh, what a great compliment! Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Stephen Moffat uh, actually mentioned my name when he accepted a Hugo Award for Blink, and I said, "Wow, that's kind of neat." Yeah. So I'm kind of jazz. Well, because of uh, World Enough and Time? Uh, because of uh, a book I did about how, how writing for Star Trek, and, and he says David Gerald got it right about writing, so that was nice. That's right. So you know him well? Then? No, uh, we've exchanged some emails, but I've never I hadn't met him in person yet. Uh, I, I, I know that Stephen Moffat said he wanted he wanted at some point to do a crossover episode between Doctor Who and Star Trek. I just wrote, it'll be coming out in about a month, a Star Trek Doctor Who crossover episode for a comic book. But it's a little bit slapstick, it's a little bit silly. So, But I'll send the copy to Stephen so he can get it, so yeah. he can see. Well, um, we did suggest, well, I suggested to James uh, for his changeover from him to, to Brian Gross. Yeah. They do a little short video. With Doctor Who, yeah. With Doctor Who, with him regenerating. That would be fun, too. Yeah. And, and James said he loved the idea. Yeah. I just don't know where it's moving ahead. Yet. Well, it, we've got so much on the plate, it's hard to know what we can do. Yeah. That would be fun. Well, that would we could be really easily fun. build a, a TARDIS you know, and <laughs> think about who we can cast. It'd be fun if we could get one of the actual actors with a doctor. Yeah. Who could we get? 
I have to yeah, I'm going to talk to James about that. I'd love to hear Tennant. That, that would be really good because, you know, that would really explain the change of pace. I like that a lot. Thank you. I'm going to think about that. Uh, all right, I'm going to get out of here. All right. I'll see you later. Okay, thank you. You're in, you were in our first phase two episode, or New Voyages, as it was then. Second. Was it the second? Oh, yeah. I think it was the second. Now, what, now I was what now? Phase two. Phase two. Phase two. Phase two. Phase two. Now, what now? I was what now? And you know Star Trek yeah. New Voyages? Right, right, right. You, you had the, a short, I think it was a short role. I had a cameo in the film. Cameo, that's yeah. right, yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. that's Cal Strickland. Cal yeah. Strickland, yeah. yeah. Well, you're pretty, you're... Before anyone knew what these fan films would turn into. That's yeah. right, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we always, always remember that. And, uh, because we that ran the Star Trek Phase 2 in Germany. Actually, I, oh, we're on the okay. website. I can thank you in person. You allowed me to uh, use your, your blog from, from uh, shooting... Uh, that the short film uh, No Win Scenario and I just uh-huh. said that, that the German and put in my German Phase 2e magazine. Okay, wait a minute. So, wait, I, I vaguely remember this. Yeah. No Win Scenario. Short film with John Carrigan, the, the bridge. Oh, right, right. The, 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 the Telluride. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yes, yes. Oh, I remember. We talked. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Thanks for that. Okay, sure thing. Yeah, yeah. sure thing. Well, I was talking about material, old or new. And I'm, <laughs> okay. I'm writing my own, and, but I'm, I'm tempted to translate it to English because we did an interview with, with uh, James and I, I'm interviewing the, the new cast. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's quite funny, but it's, um, look, and German is too easy to write in German, but to translate it is quite hard. To do what is quite hard? To translate it back to English. Oh, yeah. English German is easier than vice versa. So, yeah, for you. Yeah. English German is easier than German to English. For me. Uh-huh. But yeah, well, because he's German, I'm British, so I'm going to right. go all the way around. I, I, I Where's home? I live in Germany. Oh, okay. I live here. So okay. I live in Cologne, just next right. town down. Right, right. So, uh, so I speak fluent German as well, and he speaks fluent English. So we work together on Star Trek Phase 2 for, for the UK and Germany. Are you telling a new production or are you translating? Translating. Well, we, ba- we basically we, all, we, we subtitle everything. Uh, we do interviews, so we'd like to do some, maybe some video interviews while we're here. Yeah. Oh, okay. Are you going there now? Do you mean to come with you right now or just just a couple minutes? Okay, I'll be I'll be right there. To, okay, thank you though. So 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 you know so so we do like documentary footage at Fed Bones oh, and that kind of stuff. Well, I have a whole the year that we did No Win Scenario was actually 2005. Right. And I have a whole lot of vi- I did a, did I ever put it up? I have video of that year's shoot because I was there at the end. I missed Walter because they were shot. They shot uh, to throw my yeah. and the whole point was I wanted to be a Tellerite in the ambassador seat. And I got there too late to be the ambassador seat. But it's better because rather than being one in the crowd, I was the one Tellerite in, with the well, And that was written to be just a spy. And they said, oh, well, we'll make him a Tellerite for you. And I said, okay. So I got to, and I had footage of, of them putting the, it was a three hour makeup. And that was shot like at one in the morning, 1 a.m., 2 a.m. Like that, that it picks up when it's Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, and it, it's amazing, and John Kerrigan is the reason that's even existing. Yeah. They, yeah. Got, they got me, because it was just, it's like all the other ones. They shot five vignettes and they only made lost it and yeah. yeah, well, it was never put together. I mean, it wasn't lost, lost, but it was just sitting and no one was putting them together because there was so much work. And uh, Pony Horde was doing the effects, mm-hmm. and yeah, mm-hmm. it was good. It was like a press and press and, and they got me at least <laughs> footage of him so I could pull the stills off. Ah, but I, I, so I at least had that after a few years, but then when John said, no, we're going to make this, and I said, oh, thank you. So no, because it was hysterical. Oh, it was it 2012? Was it really mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And when I got there, that whole thing was, if you see it, when he goes, well, the whole thing was the thing, because when we did, um, what was the first one? Come What May? Come What May, okay. yes. So I met I met James in the uh, in the art department for Enterprise because we were doing communicator, right? Right. Okay. Okay. We did a story on the um, on the guys that just finished their fourth act finally after all these years. The first fan film was not Phase Two. The first fan film was uh, in Texas, the Johnson Brothers, one of the other ships. Right. Exeter. Yes, thank you, Exeter. And we did a st- one of our writers did a story for Communicator, and then. 
I was up visiting Doug and Mike in our department, and Mike says, there's someone who wants to meet you. And I said, oh, sure, okay. So it was Jay. And he says, hi, I'm James Colley. We're doing a fan film like this, blah, blah. He says, I love this story. It's great, blah, blah. He says, but I have one. He says, do you ever run corrections? And I said, yeah, if it's a correction, it's to be run. And he said, well, let me show you this. And I could tell this was really burning him up because it was the Johnson Brothers on the bridge. And it says, look, it says the Johnson Brothers on their bridge. That's not their bridge set. They used our bridge set. And I'm like, oh, okay. And he was like, really upset. And I was like, well, no. When it says their bridge, I'm thinking it's the bridge they used in their whatever. Yeah. I don't think they're trying to say, we own this bridge, we own that. Right. And but it was his set. So but it was, was a set, so he was, he was upset. Right. He's like, can you run a correction? And I said, well, how about instead of that, we just write a story about your show? And he was like, okay. <laughs> yeah. And he says, by the way, we're here in town, we're shoot they were shooting the, the John Winston, yeah. Eddie Pass, and he says, we're shooting these cameos, do you want to do a cameo, mm -hmm. uh, be a guy on screen? And I said, sure. I said, just give me a script so I can learn the lines first. There's mm -hmm. always just a little, I said, that's fine, but just, it'd be nice to see it. So the yes. whole time, the reason, part of the thing of him being upset is me, it's like, angry. like, <laughs> like I'm, I'm frustrated and not angry, but like nervous, you know, yeah, coming yeah. up. It's like, <laughs> and looking down, and a couple of times you'll see me go, well, da da da, and look up. Ah, that's the reason. Okay. But yeah. I was just like, really? And if you had told me then, oh, and a million people are going to see this. And they're getting better, yeah. Mm. But it was just like, so they goes up and it's this huge hit, and so that Manny goes into Rick Berman and go, you do, he's like, what are you going to do? Well, we're going to do all these shows of the last season. He's like, oh, come on, Manny, do you think? And Manny's like, do you know that more people downloaded this fan film than watched Enterprise last week? You know? Oh, well, that was hot. Yeah. That, that was, it was like it melted down the servers. It was a new, it was a whole new thing, mm -hmm. you know? So, um, so if you had told me then, and then I'm going and going in people's offices, they're like, hey, Cal, how's it going? And I'm like, oh, you saw that, huh? <laughs> if you had told me, I mean, I would have, I would have, I don't know, I would have done it, but I had no idea that it was going to do You probably that. never, probably yeah. none of them had under, any idea it would get that big. And then I had all these people see that, that, I mean, I, I act, my, my degrees are in theater and mm -hmm. directing. Right. So, and then I did news because I needed a paycheck, and, and then I had been very rusty, so... I had Doug, for one thing, Doug was like, that was great, that was great. I'm like, yeah, no it wasn't, but okay, you yeah. know. And all, the, all these, that's like Garrett now sees continues, and he's like, and he's like, he introduced me last night, he goes, this Larry, he's been around, he's been a writer around Star Trek and done a lot of projects, and, and now he's an actor. And I go, well, I was an actor years ago, I just put it on a shelf for <laughs> right. yeah, a while. But, but yeah, so there you go. So now it's your end of the history of phase yeah, two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you have to watch our new work guy. Brian is uh, uh -huh. Brian Gross is like. Uh, now has the new one been out? Uh, we've got it. We okay. wanted to show it uh, at FedCon this year, but they couldn't find a slot for us. They have to tell us that it's not like um, um, the the release on 24th on Valentine's Day because mm -hmm. it's a love story. Kirk meets uh, Doc Marcus. The the release was messed up. We did, we did this really big blow it. We yeah. were making posters from. Uh, I was making a poster. Did James did like it? And I was like, okay, it's on the only, only poster. And we had to release. Peter was pressing a button for the online release, and then we called, okay, stop it. Oh, well, we still wait. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. But Brian is really, let's like, say, cut out the face of shit. He's perfect. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The people always didn't like James, but Brian is. I think James' voice is better, but the acting of Brian is really oh, Wow, Larry, you really know your Star Trek. I was about to ask a question if you or uh, Richard Arnold know more about Star Trek. <laughs> well, okay, when? so I don't know if I was like a last. Somebody forgot my card. Did you notice I didn't have a card? Oh, well, no, I was sitting like this side. Oh, he was that end, I was that end, yeah. I was, Did you know, I walked in, I, yeah, said, I, I came in, because yeah. they were lining us up, and they said, okay, and they, they were starting on this end. Yeah, you know? yeah, and I, I And they started with. Um, they started with Barry. Yeah. See, that's like, I knew, that's how I knew it was like a last minute thing. They were, he's like, okay, and the list he had, he goes up to Barry, and then Max, and they started down the line, and it should have been me first. And about the time they were getting us lined up, they said, we heard him say, Larry, do a check, and I'm like, whoa, and everybody <laughs> laughed, because it's like, okay, like, are we starting at the other end? Uh -huh. And then when he said Barry, I went, well, that's weird, and then I got down here, and there wasn't a card, and I went, mm. <laughs> I, didn't, I wasn't on the first edition of the guest list or something weird. Yeah. So I went, okay. And I was like, who stole my card? And, and then they were behind. So that was a little odd. But thank you if you were going to. So, I'm really looking forward to your panel. Hmm? I'm, really, I'm really looking forward to your panel. Oh, good. That's right. Yeah. I have, uh, now I'm having a meetup. 
crowdfunder from my thing that's not on the schedule, but I've got to find I'm going to either have get a room. It's either going to be the Cairo room if Dirk will let me, or it's going to be in my hotel room. So, <laughs> which I've done before. I've done that at Vegas with 20 people in my room before. <laughs> right. You can't get a good room. Yeah. Well, well, that is nice. Like we're, yeah, we've got um, we're about permission to, to video uh, the all the Star Trek Phase Two related um, panels. panels. Alec Peters, uh, Oh, okay, that's right. And I haven't seen, I haven't seen Alec or now. He's not here. Robert's here, right? Didn't I thought Rob was here? I thought he was tweeting about being in Germany or so. Maybe he's not here. Aren't they on this afternoon? Yeah, this afternoon uh, there is a talk. Is yeah, the, yeah, yeah. I think, yeah. I think yeah. Peter's. Um, he says he was landing at eleven o'clock in Düsseldorf. Okay. So he's landed now. He'll be probably here now. Here. Okay. Well, I have to go up and get yeah, some other sure. things. Not okay. down. Okay. Nice say stuff. again. Absolutely. Okay. Stefan. Stefan. Yeah. Okay. And, and I'm Peter. Peter. Okay. Peter Walker. Peter Walker. Okay. And I, I probably Facebooked or. Tweeted or something. We, well, I know we did on that. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know we did that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We basically run the Star Trek Phase 2 DE website, the German, okay. where all the downloads, it's, it's the largest mirror by far. Okay. And we have a lot of stuff. And we do Look out, that completely makes sense. <laughs> do, you, do you have any idea if um, Germans are big on podcasts? Podcasts? Oh, mm, I'm not sure. I'm not so that internet. Fans on not internet. Like internet like guys, fans or but. Probably. I mean, yeah, we, we understand they, they English very good, so we yeah. can listen to that. No, I, I, know, I know it's not like it's a thing. It's not about the language. It's about just are you a podcast person or not. Like only about ten percent of American fans are mm -hmm. podcasts. Yeah. really. The ones that listen to them are very much. It's, well, it's they, not quite they, like a cult, they, but uh, I mean, the ones that listen yeah. know everything that about the. They are, they are yeah. amazing. Or even amazing audio fans of they are great. Just listening to like the old mm -hmm. radio, radio, radio shows. Yeah, really cool. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. Anyway, I, uh, th there's a, the, not the American Trek cast of uh, David and Darren in uh -huh. Vegas, but there's a German Trek cast. Malta? Malta Kirscher? Kirschner? Anyway, yeah. he had me on a couple of weeks ago. We were talking about FitCon and all my yeah. things. And right. I just, I'm going to say something at opening ceremonies about it. Because yeah. at the end of it, he said, so the goals of people at FedCon are see Larry's panels, go to the Connor Frath meetup, and get Larry drunk. And I said, wait, 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 what's that last one? Okay. All right. Anyway. Okay, see you later. Bye. Bye. Uh, I think I can go up here.